Three years since this project was successfully funded and Nova Atus Renaissance has arrived. And my word, what a beast. Now, um, if you've been watching the channel at all, uh, my channel before, uh, you'll know that Black Rose Wars is one of my favourite games. It's, um, it's a fantastic game by Ludus Magnus Studios who produced this beast. Um, a great kind of uh, arena battle, mage um mage wars type thing uh, where you're summoning um different monsters uh, and you're fighting against each other in in a big arena okay in the black rose rooms love it game it's such a nice game it's such a beautiful game i really liked it so really like it so i played it the other day actually solo um and it's a fantastic game so this was looking at the uh the previews of it the gameplay this looked awesome a massive <laughs> kind of narratively campaign uh, game again with some really interesting unique mechanics involved. I'm going to go through an unboxing. We'll do a detailed unboxing showing all the components, uh, what, what you get in, in, in this core box, by the way, uh, waiting on the expansion as well as uh, a couple of expansions actually. Uh, but this is the core box and as you can see it is a monster, it's about 11 kilos, I believe. Something along around the rounds of 11 kilos. In fact, it's before my mat up as I speak. So, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna bring the camera overhead and we're gonna look to see what's inside Nova Asus Renaissance. Okay, here we go then. Uh, let's have a look what's inside the core box for Nova Asus Atus Renaissance now. This is a monster. Um, I like the fact it's not cellophane wrapped, although it did have a plastic bag covering. Um, so, uh, it is a large box, as you can see from the depth. And let's see what we've got inside. So, first of all, I really do appreciate the fact that we've got a uh, foam core that's uh, keeping everything in. Not going to need that. Uh, that's just for shipping, I believe. Uh, we won't need that much more. Now... Inside of here, we've got the folder, which again, oh, awesome, uh, which has got everything ready for it to go with stretch goals, Arimi first, and more stretch goals. So this is, oh, those stretch goals and rule book. Mm, interesting. So companions, equipment, uh, the contents basically, how to do it for five to six players, side missions. You've got, um, Got the map. Is that actually? No, I think we get a bigger map than that, hopefully. Uh, then side missions, which are exploration. So that actually missions. Got the main rule book. Ooh, with companion sheet. Amazing. Some fantastic art. I've got a contents page. Okay, good. Okay. It's that I wouldn't call this a table of contents. I would call this an index, which I actually prefer to a table of contents. Uh, alphabetical, so you can go and say Proleum. Ah, okay, 43. Perfect. Awesome. However, it is a table of contents. Oh, right. So they've done their rule book in alphabetical order. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. I actually, yeah, I dig that. Um, it's less of a rule book than a kind of glossary, I guess. So... How to play it is in this tutorial. So you basically we'll run through this um, when I do the live play when I do the live playthrough, and then we'll take it from there. That's more things to go into the folder. Um, speaking of which, let's have a little look inside the folder. More packaging. So. The folder has the all the content for the story, the narrative campaign. Um, so if we open this up, we can see, hopefully, the campaign. Now, I don't want to spoil things, 
So we won't look at this in detail, of course. But effectively, we've got all of the entries for the campaign with artworks as you go through the different scenarios. And that should go perfectly, he says, into the folder. And we've got the stretch goals. And to be honest, I think the stretch goals should go at the back, not the front. This is the story pages for that. So we'll clip that, flip it, and put that one in. So they're all ready to go. So that is your story book. That's your story book of or folder, I should say. I like that. I appreciate that. That's going to last a long time. Right, next I can see is the Manchester Black Rose Wars expansion. So again, these were these were stretch goals effectively, the, the vast majority. More plastic. Mm. So let's have a little look inside of here, possibly. So inside of the Magister, oh, I appreciate it's a separate box. It kind of like keeps those stretch goals separate. You've got the mage cards and the mage dashboards. Um, and you've got the personal spells for each of them and the familiar. You've got evocations there as well, as well as a token which you probably use for something in the game. So let's have a little look at some of these miniatures. So we're going to start with <laughs> nice. uh, we're going to start with Agorix, if I believe that's right. And the miniatures, as always with these, are just top notch, very detailed for. Um, pre pre assembled mass produced miniatures. So that was Agarix. Skulltor. I think he's called the Boogeyman, but basically, um, Skulltor's from the uh, Black Rose Wars itself. So there you can see we've got the Necromancer. Look at the detail on that, it's absolutely sublime. Absolutely fantastic detail. As always, these miniatures, and we've got. Hmm, okay, fair enough. Carrying on, we move on to Jack O' Lantern. Very cool. Who's this chap? This one is Honor Moore. Oh, that's such a cool miniature. With a dynamic pose, flowing cape. That's phenomenal miniature. Really like that one. We get three dolls. Little freaky dolls. And our familiar owl. Oh yeah, it's got the half moon, so you can place it like so. I don't know, I can't remember what the owl's called. Era Cled Clelo. Era Clelo. Very cool. Okay. Brilliant. And finally the um forgotten spell I believe. Evocation. Oh. Man, the details are phenomenal. Seem to have upped their game yet again. So this is the Chimera. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Okay. So let's put that one to the side. And I believe a lot of this, plus, this, this stuff is playable in the game as well. Let's have a little look. Here's the Magister. So, 
Mage, personal spells. Maybe not, actually. I think this is, this is purely... That might be purely Black Rose Wars content that was in that box. You've got a handbook, which is all the skills, traits, and things to think about. How? Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. I appreciate things like this. Um, effectively, a um, a checklist and a flow chart of showing of how the activation works for the AI. Tells you about actions, hero selection, condition, and attack. That's that's. I love that. That's brilliant. States effect. It's quite a lot going on in this game, so it'll be one to uh, to really think about as I go through that. Right next, get some large tiles, double sided. Um, great detail, great colour pop, great saturation, fantastic. Um, with those, and then we get some snow covered ones, some interiors as well from that. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. Then the cardboard stuff. So this cane comes with 3D terrain elements. Um, like this tower, for example, which was a stretch goal. We've got um, the Perilium, um, which is kind of like your threat against the enemy, uh, so for targeting purposes, and then multiple other uh, contents. Good cardstock, good thickness, uh, so they should last. The question is, how do we store them? I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. Um, but my plan actually is to use a lot of these buildings for my tabletop miniature games as well. Um, so they're going to be out most of the time. Look at that. That's going to be a mansion. That's going to be massive. Wowzers. Okay. Um, and some floor. And we've got these. Let's have a little look. Are these ones so we've got a pub and i think they're double-sided so you can have different looks the trees are there too your classic classic kind of trees pop one of these out and have a little look <laughs> everything else pops out at the same time of course Bruh. now we might actually i might actually build one of these structures as well. We'll keep those to the side for a second. So uh, with Street Fighter Miniatures game, I realized that you've got to be a little bit careful with these trees, but they're pretty awesome when they stand up. Uh, more buildings, more trees, more tokens, another Perlium. Health tokens, more again. Right, Horologium, which is basically the, the activation clock is the best way to think of it. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll keep that out. Uh, more buildings, more tokens, a few different other terrain elements. And again. And some more tiles. And then we've got an overlay for water. And then we've got the map. This is the map I was after. So this is not only the map, but I won't be able to fit on the camera, of course. Um, of the campaign, but it's also on the other side, the kind of um, village stage or the rest action stage where you can start to upgrade things, heal, find out stories, I, I guess missions and all the rest of it. So that's awesome. It's a little bit akin to, um, it looks a little bit akin to King Death Monster, but obviously it'd be quite different. Then we've got how, to, oh, hang on. Then we've got the Horologium. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely saying that wrong, probably the um, clock hours for those, and you'll need that one and that one. We've got line of sight and um, distance markers um, and some other tokens. Okay, so now we're coming into the miniatures, so here and, and other stuff. So here we've got how to store the miniatures and where they go. Appreciate that. More and more uh, companies are doing that now. And we'll start with our first tray. So, I'll show you each sculpt. So this is, looks like an Aquabuster. Aquabuster. Um, oh, just absolutely phenomenal detail. 
I've got my son here, so I'm going to show him. I'm going to pass the miniatures to him so he can have a little look. Whilst we go through. Look at this fawn guy. It's one of the evil baddies. Well, I suppose they're all... What are you going to be playing against for the AI? You might be playing with them. I don't know what the story's going to be like. Oh. Very cool. It's like a fawn... Ah, oh, I forget what they're called. The, um... The, um... Faction. Then we've got a kind of Venetian light. So it's set in old Ven uh, in um, Renaissance era Italy and Venice, Rome, and you can see there the detail is absolutely brilliant. Uh, then we've got a papal guard. I think this is. Really nice detail on the shield. They're going to be brilliant to paint up as we use contrast paints. Really nice. I'm not sure what this is about. Um, maybe you can put different coloured bases on them to represent different things. Um, don't know. Here's another sculpt for the Papal. Oh, they're, they're, I'll tell you what, they're big miniatures as well. These are not small miniatures. I really like the size of them. They remind me of... Yeah, they're bigger than um, they're bigger than Solomon Kane miniatures. So they are they are decent sized miniatures. I would probably go with thirty four mil, something along those lines. Really, uh, they've managed to get the detail absolutely beautiful on it. Let's see if I can zoom in a minute. And the detail in the cloak, which is all sculpted. And you got just a normal bandit guy. Again, I'm just blown away by the detail on these miniatures. They're absolutely, the sculpts are brilliant. Nice, solid plastic as well. Um, ABS. Charlie's enjoying it too. And then we've got pistol. And you can see the leather cuirass there. Absolutely amazing. So all, all sculpted bases. Well, I, I guess they'll re repeat the sculpts, but you've got the patio. Again, the contrast paints are going to be brilliant for that. Then we've got a... Let's go over here. Got another guard. Wow. Now, the problem is I'm going to need to try and paint these up uh, while playing. So, yeah, another huge amount. There's another fawn marauder. Brilliant. Look at that. Just really fantastic detail. The Spriggans. Little devil people. Look at that. Amazing. With their little spears. So they're going to be a ranged character, I assume. Final one in this is the other knight. Venice Knight. As you can see there. Again, just very impressed by the detailing on these. Right, I'll leave them out and I can always put them back in. Space for some kind of tokens, I assume, over here, which is quite useful. Right, next tray. Ah, right, okay, cool. So there is space, it looks like, for tokens and everything else which is which i do appreciate oh sorry i just realized i've been zoomed in let me zoom out so we've got space for tokens in this tray here doesn't say what goes in those but i guess we'll find out in a minute and let's zoom in again and see what else we've got so we've got our characters first of all i want to say valerio i can't remember their names now it's been it's been a little while Let's just try and zoom in. There we go. So we've got Valerian the Knight. Valerio. Nice little shield on the back. Scabbard detailing. Oh, it's just sublime. That is, if you look at this, I can try and show it. You've got it sculpted with all the inlays and everything. All done for you. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, Rebecca. 
I think is next. She was a character in the Black Rose Wars. So she's the, one of the mage and magic users. And again, just I, I keep I'm keep going on about this, but the detail is amazing. Oh, no, I, I don't know the names now. Um, kind of like a rogue character, sneaking in the shadows. She, she's again just brilliant. You can use these for other games actually. Then you've got the what looks like the alchemist. Well, a bomb, I can't tell. <laughs> bomb or a potion. I think this is Fatima, I think this is. Who's the foreign warrior. Obviously an archer, ranged character. Again, just amazing detail. Oh, you've got the witch doctor. I mean, this is the Venetian mask. The scythe and the raven, all of all of the uh, all the tropes linked to the plague. <laughs> Fantastic miniature, Ezio from Assassin's Creed, of course. It was uh, also in Black Rose Wars, as you'll remember. I actually prefer the the details better on this one, but I prefer the sculpt of the uh, Black Rose Wars. It's just amazing that one. Then we'll look at a few of these and I'll put them back so I don't get lost too much. So we've got lots of characters with detailing on shields. He looks like a mayor or governor or some sort, perhaps. Mayor. Or captain of the guard. We've got... Is that a witch? Possibly? Could be a witch or something like that. Actually, I can bring these out because I've got the map of where to put these. So I'll pass those to Charlie so he can have a little look. Got the priest, the archbishop, or the priest. Look at that detail. Wowzers. Yeah, that's, that's superb. I mean, you can even see the kind of fur out, um, outer, outer lining of the cloak. So they haven't, they haven't just made it all the same um, texture. That's the priest. We've got a noble woman with a mask, masquerade. So one of, one of the hierarchy. We've got the nun. With all the groceries. Just look at the detail on the face. And all the miniatures have got this much detail. Oh, wow. Is that Witch Doctor or something? Oh, it's, it's one of these Fawn characters. She must be the one of the princesses of Fawn. I've no idea. It'll be in the story, obviously. But again, detailing all over the cloak. All absolutely raring to get used by um, contrast paints. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. And we've got three of these. I guess they're her... Her bodyguards as such. Body. Well, that's a little bit on the tilted side. Yes. So that one has tilted slightly. So a bit of hot water and cold water. Put them back. It's not It's not a bad thing. It doesn't look too bad. Nyx. Devil woman. <laughs> look at that. All detailing on the wings. Great detail on the face as well. And I got the person who I assume will go against it. Maybe even follow you, who is the uh, priest, the exerciser, knight. The exorcist. <laughs> wow. Now, now we've got what looks like a, a bit like a butcher. Don't want to cross him. Great muscle tones. And I, I haven't been seeing any mould lines, actually. I can't remember seeing a single mould line yet. So that is in, 
incredibly impressive. I'm just going to grab another miniature back and just have a little look. And we'll look for mold lines. Okay, so there's a, a, a flash here. <laughs> nope. That is, that's absolutely amazing. To have one little point of flash and that's it. The rest of it, no mold lines. Wow. I thought I hadn't seen any. Got one of the form berserker, I guess. Again, I'm not really sure. Oh, that's really cool. I can tell he's going to be a fearsome warrior. You've got, um, oh, look at the base on this one. Such a cool, but the poses on these miniatures are absolutely awesome. That's so cool. But oh my word, this has to be the best miniature in the box. A full on knight with horse. About, that must be 50 mil. Someone on those lines. Wow. That's amazing. Charlie's very impressed. Oh, Clockwork Gollum. You can't, you can't have a Ludus Magnus um, games game without a Clockwork Gollum. Very similar, but with a little church on, a little building on his back. It's very cool. Centaurs. Oh, just, wow. Muscle tone, detail, hair, de look at the hair detail. I don't know if that's coming out on camera, but look at the hair detail, that's absolutely exquisite. Um, sculpted bases, we rarely see that nowadays. And then we have three familiars. Got a little boar. A little dog. And a little bear. And finally, the Minotaur or Bullow. I think this is Bullow, actually, rather than the Minotaur. The Minotaur was a. Am I right in saying that? Well, this is the Minotaur, and the Bullow was a stretch. Was a, an expansion. I didn't get that. Nice, massive axe. Look at that axe. Wow. That's very, very cool. Right, so that is the miniatures. Well, the second box of miniatures. Not quite the miniatures. We've got a little bit more because our third and final oh. tray is next. Oh. So, this contains the player boards, okay? And the stretch cool player boards. The player board holders. We get six of those, I believe. Yep, six of those. We can play up to six because of the stretch goals that were... Sophia was the rogue. Uh, the stretch goals that were um, unlocked during the campaign. But look at this. Are you ready? Sophia. Uh, you got two Sophias. Two Valerio. Vicenzo was the, um, the alchemist or practitioner, they call him. Rebecca, the apprentice. Two of those. Then you've got all their sp moves. So it's like a cheat sheet about all their <laughs> special abilities. Okay, so we've got those one, two, three, four characters there. And effectively what happens is you have one of these. Uh, one of these boards here. Uh, we, we would punch out punch out so you've got something like this then Sophia would come into here no not like that that's wrong uh, all right I thought it was that way around yeah that makes more sense so you put your character sheet inside and this is what Black Rose did with um, the stretch goals so it enabled you to instead of having so much cardboard um, for each individual character you had like a, a template that you put a card into so i'm really impressed they've done that and then you can put your cubes into these recesses because now it's effectively double thickness and there's your health and stuff like that these are your actions 
or stats, I should say, sorry. Uh, so things like um, your action economy and how many actions you can do, your health, your, um, uh, your, in, your intelligent defense, I think that is, and then your um, physical defense and then observations. I'll have to read, obviously read into exactly what they are. But first of all, we've got a huge arachnid woman as our final miniature. There we go. Look at that. That is one scary monster. Look at that, it's amazing. Put that down there. Right, dice. Uh, they are D8s, normal D8s, but they have symbols on, uh, which are, do link into the game, which are important. Got three special D8s. Again, not sure what they are. We've got cubes of many different colours. They are to assemble the Prologium and the, um, the Prologium. Uh, we've got cards galore. So this is uh, the campaign. So you've got different areas from the map. We've got normal size cards, which uh, this is to make it easier. And then you've got cards to make it harder. You've got characters, effectively NPCs, it seems. Then you've got all of this, which is your campaign, effectively. Okay. So, yeah, a lot. You can do it in campaign mode, if you, a companion mode, sorry. So you can play the game solo or with less than four players. Um, and then you would, uh, you could just play with these cards. It will take less table space and streamline things. You've got all of the envelopes. Now, what you have to do with this, the stretch goals, I believe, is you have to, as part of the setup procedure, you'll get each of these envelopes, you get the cards that associate to the envelopes and put them in. So I will have to assemble all of the envelopes first and they will go nicely into there. We've got uh, materials to craft with, so it's got crafting in it. Um, you've got special abilities. You've got items and achievements and injuries. You've got um, more weapons and items and destinies, which I think was a stretch goal. Uh, you've got achievements and people. So there is a lot of stuff inside of this game. Uh, let's start with this one. It's a potion. It's a potion. Thank you, Shai. Um, so our, oh, what's it called? Our uh, practitioner um, is an alchemist. Seems because he's got potions. Uh, Charlie was just telling me. So let's have a little see what we've got in this first little pack. We've got Medina, Lucha, so Siena, Abrezia. Uh, so we've got different locations. Um, and oh, okay, uh, that's when you go into the town. Uh, so when you go into the town phase, these are the things which you'll have access to or bonuses for in each of those. It's also got a little bit of. Uh, text and story about some of these things, the main ones. There are your companions, so there were your stretch goals. And you see, so everything's just concise onto one sheet. So I don't know, I might go down that route of a companion rather than a hero. Uh, we do have, however, for all of the stretch goals, we have full player boards as well. And then we've got the stretch goal, stretch goal missions. And hunts, you can go on hunts. Uh, oh, there's the Chimera. Awesome, so you, all those stretch goals you can play with. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. So the stuff that was in that Magister box, we will be able to use. Which I just wanted to make sure. That's cool. Um, so effectively, that's the stuff we need for the campaign. Uh, let's have a little look in here. This is the uh, standard size cards, Euro standard cards, uh, Euro standard cards, I think, or oh, just standard. So we've got 
all the different characters. And again, they all have their own stats as well. Um, uh, and in this game, they don't attack. You roll to defend. That's how this works. Um, with different keywords. Again, you've got that little handbook to help you with those. Oh, the Sacred Guard, Swiss Guard, Swiss Keeper, the Nun, Stradig or Stradiot, uh, Aquabuster, Gypsy, Noble, Gunslinger, Moldovian Knight, Slinger, Lancer. Don't rock the table, Charlie. Charlie, don't rock the table. Uh, the Warrior, the Marauder, the Bully. No, it wasn't called Below, it's called Bully. Uh, the Witch. Uh, Oh, okay, don't really know what this is. Uh, risen sheep. <laughs> so there's some of the cards. I imagine the rest are in this pack here. But my word, what a lot of content for a core box. This is, I mean, it says a core box. It's literally everything. It's the core pledge <laughs> rather than a core box. Uh, you doubt you're going to get this in retail. So the, here you've got uh, white cards for um, making things easier, I want to say. And then you've got the, oh no, and you've got, you should have some ones that make it hard. Like so, okay. Um, we've got some more people like the Knight, the Inquisitor, Spy, Succubus, Explorer, Huntsman, Butcher, Cult Guard, Arcana. Arcana, the Chimera, Scarecrow, Clockmaker, do uh, Dolls, Technomancer, Dark Magician. So all of that stuff that was in, um, that's really good to see. I, I, th I thought it was the case, but in the Magister box, you can use all of that in this game. Um, then we've got more of these events. Are they events? Don't know. I'll have to find out. These are different factions. The Promavi, the Rome and Venice. Okay. These are the terrain elements and what they do in the game. So just like in Kingdom Death Monster where you have a train cards and they explain what they do, you've got that in here. So you've got all of this terrain, whether it will be randomly selected or you, you shuffle a deck. Uh, that is stuff that's happening. Again, little vents probably. Amazing. Um, and then we'll open up one of these packs. See the smaller cards are uh, literally hundreds of cards as you probably imagine so we've got gold metal florins uh regular so these are these are um uh ingredients i guess leather that you can belladonna mandrake um then rewards Oop, i should probably turn it around that way so you have rewards where is the stradia i'm not really sure encounters maybe these might be encounter cards. See who you were going against. Uh, charge. Oh, that's the hunts cards. Again, I think the hunt came in as a so you can hunt the bear. There, you got token for the bear, by the way. Then you've got these. These are the special abilities, objectives. These are objectives, destiny objectives. Again, I think these were unlocked in the campaign. Loads of space for cards, which is good. So actually, there's loads of space for cards. So potentially, this might fit in any uh, expansions that you might have as well. I could be wrong there. Um, but it, it looks pretty decent in terms of its size. Amazing. So, that's a little look at Nova Atus Renaissance. Uh, the it looks like these uh, just go in. You might need to use a little bit of glue, possibly. Uh, let's just have a little go at one of these buildings very quickly. So you've got to pop out the. Uh, as I say, I've not really looked at it into it in much detail recently, um, but it's it is that grand adventure game, which does look cool. Oh, this is not right, is it? No. But effectively what you've got, and you'll have a, a roof obviously somewhere, is you've got these which will go in like so. And by the time you put the roof in, it's like battle systems. Uh, you've got a bit, um, yeah, I think that'd be relatively sturdy. We'll definitely have a look at that. Let's see how that goes. Okay. Well, 
Hope you found that useful uh, and interesting as an unboxing of Nova Atus Renaissance by Ludus Magnus Games. Uh, it's definitely something I'm going to um, be showing on the channel as I start to play through the campaign. So until next time, keep gaming and stay safe.